Yeah. So nice to meet you all. And I am honored to welcome you to the 2020 Montgomery International Film Festival panel discussion. I, yep. and this is my first time joining the festival and I couldn't be more excited to have a conversation with all of you. My name is Amen. Sarah Faraji and I am a PhD candidate at the University of Maryland where I study yeah. English. And I have four years of film festival experience. I worked for wow. the Carnegie Mellon University mm -hmm. International Film Festival, which was so much fun mm -hmm. working in a lot of different capacities from logistics to film selection and film, short film festival competition, everything. And I also teach global film, uh, okay. film art in a global society is the name of the course. And I'd love to introduce the rest of the panelists. So happy to have you all here. Uh, first, we Thank have, you very much. Yes, first we have Giovanna Salas. Uh, she was a panelist last year. So happy to have you back. And she is a producer and director. I'm so excited to learn more about yeah. your work. We also have joining us Dr. Fu Ping, who is a film professor at Towson University where she teaches comparative literature with a concentration in film studies and theater. And we yeah. also are excited to welcome Abdul Zainidi, who is Zainidi, a- yeah, that's right. Zainidi, yes. Uh, Zainidi, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Abdul Zainidi, who is a director and writer from Brunei, uh, the very best, wow. representing the very best <laughs> in the country. So excited to welcome I'm probably you. the only one this year, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes, and we also have joining us uh, Ashish Wa, uh, who is, we're welcoming uh, back again, who last, is an Thank Indian you. producer. And you Thank also you. worked with uh, one of our other judges, Mark Bechet, who yeah. won an Oscar mm -hmm. for No Man's Land. So we yeah, can hear yeah. more about your work. And lastly, we have joining us Harry Wang. He offers a fresh perspective as a young college filmmaker who is the editorial director of the Duke International Film Festival. So really mm -hmm. happy to have wow. all of you, such a wide variety of different perspectives on film and film festivals and film and academia. So the theme of the panel today is a post-pandemic filmmaking, a discussion on the future of the film industry. So yeah. we just really wanna have an open-ended discussion and anyone can unmute and speak at any time. would love to hear from all of you. The first question I'd like to ask is how has the global pandemic impacted your work and how have you adapted to or learned from these challenges? Yeah, so um, um, I just take the, like, you know, I take the opportunity and I'll start with me, <laughs> in fact. So in, back in India, definitely uh, the things are uh, out here because it, it got worse hit in, you know, primary months, you know, in the month of March, April, and uh, we, we were completely locked down. And uh, certainly from June, July onwards, it's got a little bit relaxed out here. But uh, and in terms of business-wise, it's completely, uh, you know, bad in terms of, you know, kind of uh, films got stalled in terms of it was, uh, I was fortunate to complete in my film. I, I have completed my, I just finished my uh, films by end of, you know, uh, March. And after that, immediately there's a lockdown happen out here. But apart from that, there are a lot of uh, businesses. There's a big firms which is uh, completed or they have, you know, there was some kind of a portion was yet to complete. So uh, it was a great hit, you know, great impact happened on the industry, definitely. In terms of uh, the productions and everything is gone, uh, you know, you know, stalled and it's moved to the 2021. So everybody is whoever had that kind of a thing, you know, the pending works and all that, they started right now still with the kind of a fear and uh, the still cases are happening on the sets and everything. But uh, we have moved on, in fact, in terms of that, okay, uh, that's the situation out here. Uh, uh, producers, killed and everything, they have taken, uh, you know, they have a prime office, they made a strategy and all that, and we are following up all that stuff right now and uh, following the uh, COVID, uh, you know, safety situations and everything mm -hmm. out there on the sets and everything. 
in terms of uh, firms um, theaters got very badly impacted out here there are a lot of i i would say there are around 700 cinemas uh, independent cinemas got shut down completely for forever in fact they got completely into the uh, and i don't see that they will come back because they got a big hit out here, here. Uh, but we are uh, exactly you know all are keeping uh, you know things together all the industry coming together and saying that okay let's uh, join hands and we are making the synergies we are uh, you know and uh, looking forward for 2021 will be a big year for the film industry out here so uh, what we have done out here um, we have almost uh, everyone from that hollywood or like in, in terms of bollywood and tamil and telugu industry and everyone has announced multiple films at the same time to just uh, you know give a gist to the whole entire uh, you know industry uh, and people who are working for it so uh, we are looking at a great perspective and very positive about it i think this situation will uh, you know they will will get make or whatever loss happened for the year i think by 2020 end will you know cover that thing and uh, by doing with this pandemic as the positive side i would say that we all learn how to work from home and uh, we are taking all this work uh, you know kind of uh, lot of offices have you know vacated their places because they think now the work is already happening or the you know by zoom meetings or everything you know kind of narrations are happening projects are green lighting and all that so uh, there is a one uh, uh, way to look at it is very positive the ott platforms are doing serious like you no know, great you know they're working well out here and there's a lot of content is getting made so i would say and i'm i'm happy to say that there are great writer good writer who's writing and the directors all are busy uh, they don't have a date they don't have an actors even for that matter they are completely busy shooting and they have something all around so i think it's it's a combination of yes we learn uh, it was unplanned and uh, no one was aware about this situation so yeah now we are prepared for that and i think hope everyone and worldwide our whole industry i think will cope up with that also yeah that's it that's about my experience out here yeah that's so interesting to learn about you know bollywood yeah. tamil film industries huge industries and i know india yeah. was hit very hard with the pandemic and seeing how you're using different technologies and creative approaches yeah. to still uh, try to keep the industry going it's uh, great to learn yeah. about and giovan or anyone else want to share how you've adapted your business uh in your work during the pandemic one of the things uh that i would like to say is uh, first of all i uh, thank you for the montgomery international film festival for making this virtual uh festival in a different setup i i want to say that for um everyone it has been a very painful situation in the personal life and in the professional life I have a company and I live in Los Angeles and I believe that in different parts of the world is uh is different. So uh the lockdowns here were very uh heavily enforced. We have curfews, we have uh shutdowns. And so it's difficult to uh run a business and work in productions when you are trying to accommodate other things in order to make it happen. I will say that uh even the situation was very difficult we try to innovate uh my company there is Caro Hollywood uh and we uh transition from uh the in person setting to the zoom meetings to the uh, virtual environment uh one of the things that my company uh made is a uh, in person event so in 2019 we made an international event in mexico then when we went to france and then we were going to do another one in cannes and everything you know kind of fall apart since uh, we have a, a a base of uh, global networking and we didn't know how to cope with that uh, with canceling uh, every event so it was it was difficult and we decided to make it virtually in order to continue interacting with everyone i would say the or other things they they it make you worry is what you're going to do with the people that works with you because people is uh, you you don't have a, a a production job but you you have the client that is closing uh, her or his company at the same time and how you're going to maintain 
uh, the the payment for the worker the 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 that you you know you you had to pretty much as a producer you had to provide jobs you had to provide uh, uh, work for for all the people and so I really um, encounter myself in a very difficult uh, situation you know if there was like to reestablish my team to retrain my team to uh, look outside of the box and thinking, okay, we need to rebuild the business because this is not working anymore. And so uh, since March, we transform, we rebuilt from ground zero all our websites and we make it like available for online. We open a, a online store. We decided to do more online meetings and to try to uh, uh, work with other with other audience, all right? They, and train people and, and hire virtual assistants. And so, uh, I have to say that we've been very very busy, and I've been spending a lot of my time uh, training people, finding uh, 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 another technical team because at the same time where you're doing uh, Zoom meetings or you are going to work into a virtual set using Zoom. There is also some compromises that you have, uh, that you lose, you know, you lose the video quality, you lose. And then so we were thinking how to compensate for all of that. And then in the meantime, so another, um, uh, I will, I would like to touch some of the uh, positive and negative uh, things. I will say, I would like to resume that. So. So one of the negative things for me, I think it was just the, the loss, the pain, the state of mind that everyone is. It's even hard for me because never in history I have experienced seeing so much death around me, like all the way from friends to colleagues to other uh, business friend, um, owner friends of mine close in their business just like once after another, like a domino effect, you know, I feel very uh, thankful and lucky that I still, uh, you know, a company and with a team because this is not easy. You don't wish this for anybody. And I think that we are entering in a to economy that didn't matter how big your business was or how small uh, your business was, is that, that the emotion is the same, the feeling is the same. And this is very important and how impact our economy and how impact our daily uh, life that, that we keep on going with our day because and then it's a struck our vision and a clear thought of where we want to do in our professional or in our business. And so I would like to talk now about the positive side about this pandemic. And so the positive side is that you, uh, one of the things like I was saying in the beginning, my company did international events in outside the country as well. So now we can no longer do this. But with this pandemic, uh, we, released, re we realized that we were uh, we have another tools that we're not uh, we were not using like uh, uh, resources like Zoom and other outlets. And so we decided that now we can collaborate internationally. So the borders was not longer an issue. So now you can collaborate with one person that is in Asia, in Europe, or in the Americas, and then you can you can run a production, and that um, that was something that we proved by making during these months. I start working with different countries, with different producers, all the way from March until November 14, and we did something beautiful. We did uh, it was like a fashion film from different places because. Uh, the fashion industry got very affected and and also like we're talking about fashion films so, so I think that the positive things is to think what you can do what you can you know like serve to society what is needed for society at this time and as a filmmakers is our social responsibility to find positive outcomes even though maybe that the feelings might not be the most uh, upbeat or positive, but we had to continue move forward. And I'm thinking that this uh, way that we're working or interacting or how the casting are going to be or of the table readings are going to be 
or the, even the business meetings or pro production meetings, these are going to affect even after this pandemic goes away. You know, so that is something that now we have to realize that this uh, is, is going to stay and we are going to get into a situation where the events are going to be um, a hybrid events, you know, the, the film festivals now we're going to have this. So I, do, I personally do not believe that we are going to go back to the normal. I, I, I have a deep passion for technology. I always have since I was um, uh, more um, young, but now I see the impact and I believe that we must as uh, filmmakers retrain ourselves, retrain our theme, uh, find the sources. If we don't know something, find help. I've been working with another producers that I never worked before. But these, uh, you know, kind of forces to find, to build alliances with other companies and with other people that is knowledgeable about the technology. And so I built a complete, a completely different team in order to continue moving forward in order to keep my team working. And so uh, I wish that everything uh, goes properly uh, with, with the vaccines, with, I mean, it really feels like a, uh, like a movie on a sci-fi in real life. This is, I was in denial first, and now it's like, you know, this is happening and and you're thinking and what other things, but what I would like to um, to say for life is that we must think positive. We must think in something productive that we can leave for, for our society. And we have to be responsible as a content creators and producers that we need to inspire other people, especially the young, the, the everybody is suffering different stages of mine, but the young people are getting a really, really uh, if bad effect because you know now what is the future for them? So I think that uh, the future we can, as a producers and creating content again, we can illustrate a better world. And so I think that that's what I want to say. And I, I believe that we all can, can do this together and making the Montgomery International Film Festival in this setup, I think it's amazing. The, this was a, a very, very, very good uh, for everyone, for all of us participating, for the filmmakers that can continue putting their films on and you know, to let make a point that the, these things must continue. Giovanna, I really appreciate your forward thinking perspective on this. And you were discussing how there was so much loss in the film industry, events were canceled, but at the same time, even despite issues with technology and Zoom, it's great to hear that you were able to forge new partnerships and connections uh, internationally and be able to also think empathetically, what communities need the support and help? How can you join forces? I love hearing that. And building upon that, I was wondering if Abdul, from a creative filmmaker, writer perspective, if you could share any insights on what you have learned from this process as a creator, how have you adopted? And is there anything you'd like to share in this regard? Thank you. Um, firstly, thank you to the Montgomery International Film Festival for having me here. Uh, it's uh, an honor, especially from Brunei. Uh, we're not very uh, well represented, I think, in cinema yet. So we're slowly uh, getting there. So for me and for what the film represents, it's an honor to be just sharing what I think about the views of cinema with all of you. Um, luckily, our country hasn't been hit that badly. We are very lucky because we've had um, we've had a because we're a small country. We we kept it quite under control. We're not even a million in population, as you may or may know. Um, we're on the island of Borneo. Uh, we share that with Malaysia and Indonesia, so we're the smallest part of Borneo. So we're not even, I'd say, five hundred thousand half a million actually in our population so we can we we sort of kept the pandemic under control in terms of our cinema industry we're very still growing so we're in our infancy 
So we don't have many filmmakers like myself uh, and directors as well. Uh, in terms of what the pandemic has taught us, I would say that it has taught us to be creative because there has been a lot of, as, you, as a lot of your countries have had restrictions, uh, lockdowns. We had, a, we had our lockdowns from uh, March up to uh, September. So during that time, we couldn't film anything. So I was lucky because I filmed The Worm and the Widow, my feature film, just before uh, COVID broke out uh, in March. So we finished the production filming in two and a half months. So unfortunately, we wanted to release the film in cinemas in April, but because of COVID, uh, cinemas were shut down. So cinemas only began to reopen uh, a month ago in, in my country, two months ago, sorry. So even then, uh, now, uh, cinemas suffer because there's, um, in terms of like uh, people coming to watch films, there hasn't been any um, people coming to watch. So having somebody like me have a film, uh, a locally made film is something quite good and quite, um, I think I would say inspirational for the country because it shows that we can still have something uh, even in this very challenging year. And I think that it's also very tough because uh, we aren't allowed as much uh, of a crew as before. We're kept to a minimum, so we cannot take uh, as many extras as before. And we have to learn how to basically be creative in terms of how many actors we want to use in terms of a film. So if you had originally in your script uh, five leading actors or five leading actresses, you, you might need to consider trimming it down to three due to COVID restrictions. Because right now, even on film sets, we're not allowed that much um, uh, extras or crew or even actors on set. So we have to be creative. And unfortunately, we, we also have to learn to let go of certain things like for example, characters, certain stories and make room for something maybe even better. So I think this pandemic has taught us to let go of things, but also try to be creative in terms of finding new ideas with the environment of COVID. I was very lucky in terms of technology, we were talking about technology. Um, I was asked to contribute to an omnibus project from the Salam Mindanao Asian Film Festival in the Philippines. So every um, filmmaker from Southeast Asia had to film uh, footage during the COVID time, what it was like to film in the COVID time. So I think every country is different, but we obviously we cannot have a big crew with us. So I just shot with my mobile phone uh, what it was like during the pandemic. So people were out uh, maybe not as much jogging or people were out shopping, but uh, very limited. So it was just to show the uh, situation in my country. And then um, the festival director combined all of our footage and it became an omnibus. So that was very interesting. I don't think that if we had COVID, uh, we would have been allowed this opportunity to merge. I think this, this technology creates bridges that allows us all to you know, share ideas, share our vision, and I think that what we're doing right now with the Montgomery International Film Festival is the same thing. We're bridging uh, cultures, we're bridging ideas, and we're bridging, you know, uh, art, I think is the most important thing. Art is what uh, paints the world, even in this dire challenging year, I think art can still somehow prevail. And I think it's our job as filmmakers, uh, writers, actors, or entertainers to try to get art out as a positive message, even in this very challenging time. And I think that doing things online is gonna be the new norm, I think for a while. So we, we have to get used to it. Even me getting used to the Zoom is still very surreal. <laughs> so I, I mean, this is my second time Zooming. Uh, so yeah, it's very surreal, but I think I have to start training myself to get used to it. And I think a lot of us have to be able to adapt to this. So I think it's all about uh, adaptation, I think, above all. Wow, I think many of us would love to see that omnibus project. That sounds so fascinating, thinking about uh, kind of a 
documentary perspective of what's happening during the pandemic caught on film uh, from a mobile phone, even from your mm -hmm. film. So that's interesting. And I also like that you and Giovanna and others have spoken about how the this is really, you know, it's not as though we're going to go back mm -hmm. to a certain type of filmmaking or perspective uh, after the pandemic ends, we are using these tools and strategies and really making them a part of our future. And that makes me also think about kind of the study of film. So I would love to hear from Dr. Ping on this, thinking from an educational perspective. How, have you, how are you finding research and teaching of film changing during this time? What are your observations and thoughts here? Thank you for this opportunity. And then I'm so glad to see every one of you. Some of your uh, familiar faces, I'll say hi. Um, uh, my work I divide into three dimensions. Uh, one is the production, uh, film production. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker as well. Um, production and uh, film production and stage production in China. And the other one is the editorial uh, film uh, committee work for the film journals. And then one is my uh, teaching and research. Um, for the production part, it's heavily, heavily um, uh, influenced. Um, I, first of all, I block here. I can't go back to China. Uh, so I can't join any production, stage production, film production, anything. So most of the just having conversation, share ideas, and through the Zoom meetings and emails and things. Uh, but I might personally, I cannot be on site. Uh, that's a big pity to me, uh, uh, and big, that's the part I enjoy very much. Um, the second dimension for the, the film journal, and we're still keeping going, that one is going very well because it's all the words. Uh, I'm still receiving the articles we can review and we can select, and, and, and pretty much still the same as before. Uh, actually, uh, it turned out the uh, the more scholars being more productive because you were engaged <laughs> at the house and more time. Uh, you save the time for traveling from home to school, teaching. Now this time, a lot of people save a lot and then doing more research work. And we, we receive many good articles to review. For their part, actually, it's, it's a plus. And for my teaching part, it is hard. The film class. Um, I'm mostly teaching uh, women's cinema and Asian cinema. I teach Chinese cinema, Japanese, uh, Korean, and East Asian cinema, uh, also Vietnam, Vietnamese cinema, uh, and part of the Indian cinema as well. So for students, when we post those courses, the students always say, Ugh, because in our film study, um, most of the film classes, no matter is uh, uh, production or theory or criticism or any something, we all require students to provide the assignments, uh, one production. You need to produce a short, many films. And nowadays it's not possible because all the materials, the machines, everything is locked in the school and no student can come back. Uh, some students, they don't have the kind of the vehicles uh, to operate this kind of the assignments. So we have to, to change this part. Actually, students enjoy this part very much. Now we have to change this part. For my classes, I'll increase the part for editing because uh, you can learn the simple way, iMovies, everything. Uh, and I also open the door for them to say, okay, you can find whatever will. Uh, and even if they can't go outside to shooting everything, then you, I will allow that you can do something which is if copyright allowed. Uh, you can uh, explore the internet and find the stories and can you put them together and edit as a short, interesting film. And find, of course, there's a, there's a thing uh, to go on, to know how to uh, compose a film, start from the script. Uh, and pretty much they learn more how to write a script, literature script, and then doing the, uh, the, the shooting script. So this part will increase this part uh, because this you can do at home and thing without um, machines operations. And also uh, students missing the part of performance. In my class, we when I do um, criticism, uh, history, film history, and also we leave a small portion for students to perform. 
we take a film and they take a role and then play the role, see how they interpret this kind of role through their performance in class. Um, this part is completely missing. A student like that part. But I said, well, right now at home, you can do it by home. You set up the video, you can do suit yourself, uh, do the solo show. Um, so we still have find a way, um, just uh, whatever you guys haven't said, uh, be creative. Uh, which is some of the way we normally, we don't have the kind of time, the luxury of time to do it in class. Right now, you make it possible. We can do it outside the classroom and you still can share through the Zoom and through those kind of uh, social media. But the one thing is we have to be concerned very, very cautiously is the copyright. What kind of materials we can use and we can edit in and then we can post and what kind. So this is, we have a lot of the rules for university thing we have to watch. Um, so that part was still quite limited. Before, if we have something show in the classroom, because at university we enjoy sort of the privilege uh, under the name of uh, educational purposes, right? We show in the classroom everything, and then we make many things to justify. But nowadays it's dangerous. If once we post on the Zoom, on even the Blackboard or something, which is tend to be social media. So the copyright tend to be a kind of the uh, restriction to us. And I have to repeat you, remind the students, okay, be careful, be careful, be careful. Um, um, and otherwise, I think uh, most of the things that we still going on well, I personally, I would think that way. Of course, um, for student part, I can see students sort of kind of, uh, a little bit kind of the reduce their interest in taking film classes at the moment because they know the film class we have a lot of activity we need to be on site everything and some of the students they email me and says oh professor i like the class da, da, da. but i will save the chance for later and when we go back to normal yeah, that's pretty much uh, in my situation. I think we, I exchange notes with my colleagues. We all think that that's pretty much the situation. What I'm hearing from you and from others on the panel is a reiteration of one of our themes for the year for the festival, which is perseverance and thinking about how to the continue film production and teaching and how to work with possibly a limitation of tools when we have uh, certain limitations on the number of people we can have on set or on the tools that we can use. I think that it sounds like it's helping to make people more creative in a sense. It's helping us to think of uh, how are there new possibilities for problem solving. So I think that it can make us even stronger uh, producers and teachers. And as we near the end, I would love to hear from Harry from the perspective of working for a film festival. Obviously, as we're seeing right now with this film festival, we are shifting a bit from the standard having uh, events in person to online. I'd love to hear more about your perspective of working at Duke, working with us, what have you observed and learned from, from a film festival perspective during the pandemic? Yeah, first of all, I, I would like to just thank the festival for inviting me to share some of the student perspectives. It's definitely been a very interesting semester for student filmmakers. We actually had a virtual film festival last semester, which was the uh, middle of the year because that's when the country got shut down. So we have a bit of experience with sort of virtual communication with the film festival. And I think there's a lot of uncertainty on the student side too, not only with student filmmakers, because obviously our school has to pause a lot of student film productions out of concerns for COVID, but also the industry has stopped sort of hiring internships and sort of hiring new, new interns and new workers. So students are definitely worried about their futures of you know, job opportunities and everything like that. And I thought that at least for the Duke Film Festival, we thought that it would be a good vantage point for students to have a pre-professional platform for them to communicate with one another, as well as creating some opportunities for students, aside from just showing films during filmmaking or 
encouraging student filmmaking. We're also doing things on the side. And the editorial is one really big part of that where we just assembled our biggest editorial team yet. And we've expanded our editorial scope. We're writing a bunch of film reviews, film news and streaming recs, not only to give students who are interested in film a channel to really voice their opinions and give their perspectives, but also to show other students who are just interested in film, what are some of the things that they can check out in streaming and also encouraging their filmmaking. Another really cool thing that we're doing at the film festival is that I recently just started a new podcast program and it created a lot of opportunities. We took advantage of Zoom. So it's basically like a Zoom format. We're having a Zoom meeting just like we are right now. And we're editing it in post-production. We're publishing it on YouTube channels. And I thought that was a really great opportunity for students to not only talk about film, but also to give students some editing and filmmaking experiences given this new technology like, uh, like the other panelists have talked about. And also aside from working at the film festival, I also am an officer in the Duke Student Production Company. And we use a lot of innovative ways to not only just encourage more pre-production to tell students that although we cannot film these movies and projects yet, but you can come up with stories, you can come up with ideas to pitch to your producers. And we're also doing a lot of 48 hour challenges where we're encouraging students to make films by themselves with their cell phones to encourage really innovative filmmaking and it has worked out really well. So I think although there's still a lot of uncertainties for students and I think students are still sort of eager to find out a way to see what the industry is going to be like post the pandemic, I think we have also created a lot of opportunities that in a way has brought everyone sort of closer together in the film community. Well, it's so refreshing to hear that despite all of the challenges for students, the reduction in the number of internships that are available, you've, as you said, been taking advantage of the technologies and experimenting with new types of technologies and really fostering a sense of community building. And it's really great to hear that. Uh, we I've really enjoyed hearing from all of you and learning from your perspectives. And I hope that our viewers will be able to gain a lot of insights from this as well. So we'll wrap up, but I just want to thank all of you again for joining us for the Montgomery International Film Festival. And it's been such a pleasure to hear from you all and to hear about how your production and writing, teaching and work strategies have changed. I really look forward to welcoming you to our festival next year as well. And I hope that you have safe and happy holidays.